So can you clarify in terms of using writing out people's songs in your in your, in or quoting a line from a poem or a song? Okay. Uh, okay, thanks for asking that question. Uh, for the poems and for the lyrics, it's the same thing because they are considered as literary works under the definition of the act as well. And so they'd receive the same protection. You mentioned the one line that may be the most effective line in the work. And so when you're looking at infringement, you're looking at, as I said before, a case by case basis. If that is the, mo the, the, the line that sells your work and your work is famous for that, if someone uses that, then certainly, you know, and that would have been a breach as well. What if writing a book is not just a way to transform the lives of many people, but also a way to create financial freedom and leave a legacy? Wouldn't you want to find out just how to do that? Well, that's what this show is all about. Hi, I'm Henneke Watkiss, sporter, speaker, coach, author of Podcast Power and the host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast, inviting you to listen to the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast brought to you by C. Ruth Taylor, best selling in the author and the Caribbean's most trusted voice on entrepreneurship. Tune in for inspiration, information and innovation to write and win with books. Get ready to dominate entrepreneurship. Greetings, Apreneurs. Welcome to episode 44 of the Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, to see Ruth Taylor, and this is a show that gives you the roadmap to take charge of your publishing and the stories and strategies to dominate entrepreneurship. Coming up in today's show, we are going to continue where we left off last week, and we're going to be featuring the Q&A segment as it relates to copyright, trademarks, and intellectual property from day two of our Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit. And I'm gonna feature some of the questions that the audience asked as myself and the JIPA representative, Ms. Chantal English, who is an attorney and author and the manager of copyright and related rights at the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office as we answer the questions that the authors had and other creatives had. Um, in this most important era to protect the work that we have created. So stay tuned for that. One of the things that we want to do on this show is to give you the tools and the strategies that you need to take charge of your publishing. And we're continuing on that trajectory this week in our resources to win segment. I'm going to introduce you to an editing tool that has caused my writing to become better, whether I'm self editing or proofreading my work or other people's work, because I also edit for others. I'm a structural editor. And recently I joined my school's editorial team to edit master's um, projects and doctoral dissertations. I'm doing my doctorate at Bakke Graduate University. And they asked me to share my story a couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to put a link to that article in the show notes. And it's all about how I started my entrepreneurship journey, how this is tied into my doctoral studies and uh, how it has led to the founding of Bamboo Sparks, um, also known as Extra Mile Innovators Limited. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy that inspirational read. So today I'm going to talk about Pro Writing Aid. Now, Pro Writing Aid is the only platform that offers world-class grammar and style checking combined with more in-depth reports to help you to strengthen your writing. Many persons are familiar with Grammarly, but Pro Writing Aid was especially created for authors. It has a free version as well as a paid version. I generally use the free version, but I hope to purchase the full system later. It's a grammar checker, style editor, and a writing mentor in one package. So how I use it, I generally take it chapter by chapter and I paste it in the web editor 
and then it is going to tell me what I need to fix. So on the left hand side of the screen, it has the grammar and spelling style and it gives you a rating. It has a style guide companion. It tells you about your sentence length, readability, sentence variety, whether you're using the passive voice, if your paragraphs are complex, what is the reading level, how the pacing is um, in terms of emotions, if you've used dialogue tags, unusual dialogue tags, it has a lot of features to guide you. So you're not only correcting the mistake. So one of the things is that I am still not very good at my use of commas and semicolons. And so I depend on pro writing aid to help me, but when it corrects something, it also explains the grammar rule. And I love that about it. It will pick up on words that you've not spelled correctly. If the words should be joined and you have them separated like teammates, <laughs> it should be one word. And sometimes I have it as two. And it will tell you if you've started a quotation and you, you didn't put the closing quote, it will help you identify if you're writing in a passive voice, which we who are schooled according to the British system seem to do a lot. And it will help you to rephrase it and put it in the active voice. Now, you don't accept all the corrections that poor writing aid gives you because sometimes it is trying to change the meaning of what you are trying to convey and it will kind of be like changing your voice. And uh, so, you want to read along, you don't have to accept everything, but I find it extremely useful. So part of how I edit now that has helped because earlier in my um, writing journey, I've always used editors, but um, the proofreading process after the edit, um, most of the time I was doing it by myself and there are some things that I missed. And so one of the comments that I was getting is that my books were not properly edited, even though I had a, uh, um, I've used editors and paid for for editing, but you know the copy editor will miss certain things, and then not only that, I make mistakes in correcting or addressing the editorial comments. So I don't blame my editors. I believe it is as I am correcting and adding and doing my author correction notes that is where I mess up. And when they say not properly edited, sometimes there's a sentence um, or a word that I, that I miss out. And uh, um, sometimes it has happened where I uploaded the incorrect version of the book. <laughs> and when you're reading it back, it's not as if you don't know what to do. I know my English, but I overlook it. So one of the things that I do know is to actually use the read aloud feature on the computer to actually read the text so that I can hear it. And then I follow along in my um, formatting tool in Atticus and that helps me. I'll tell you another time how I use Atticus and um, talk about that tool, which Dave Chesson first announced on our program for release. So what I do, I also print it out. So I find that even my general email, crafting my email, sometimes I will miss out on a word. And very often it is when I am reviewing and changing a sentence that I miss out. So what I do as well is to copy and paste that into the Pro Writing Aid web editor. And it helps me with my posts. It helps me with my writing. Um, for my regular emails and newsletters and with books for myself and others. And it's a lifesaver. So I recommend Pro Writing Aid. A um, hundred percent, it will help you to reduce your publishing costs because if you don't have to pay a proofreader after copy editing, then Pro Writing Aid will help. And of course, I recommend always, although we want to save on paper, print a copy of your manuscript because you don't catch everything on the screen. After a while, you begin to read what you think should be there and you need fresh eyes. So when you print it, you're able to see certain things. And sometimes take a step back, take a step back a week or two away from 
the manuscript and come back to it. So I trust that you enjoyed that tip and resource to win on your author journey. All right, just want to remind you that this show is sponsored by Bamboo Sparks. Bamboo Sparks believe that your book is the perfect spark to get the fire going in your personal life, ministry, or business. And we've seen that over and over. And uh, Bamboo Sparks offers premium publishing services to authors in the Caribbean and the diaspora. And uh, you can go to www.bambusparks.com to find out more about the services, which include the self-publishing spark, where if you just need individual services, whether that is editing, proofreading, cover design, you can just go and hire one of the freelancers in making publishing easier. We know that some of you do not want to take charge. You don't have the time to learn and you want somebody to manage the process. So Bamboo Sparks is an independent publishing services and education and training business offers some done for you packages where you can pay for the services, get an assigned coach and we manage the process for you as well as there is a new deal that they're offering, which is a royalty share deal to a limited number of authors where we will work with you to publish, market and sell your books for a limited period and uh, you don't have to pay any money upfront. So it's almost like a quasi traditional publishing deal. So check out Bamboo Sparks. Just before we go to our Q&A section from the Authorpreneur Summit to continue where we left off last week about copyright, trademark, and protecting our creative work, I just want to say, you know, the world is more connected than we think, because as we look at what is happening with Russia and Ukraine and uh, the war that is going on although it is far yet we are affected there are jamaicans in ukraine i heard there were about 27 or 29 students and they were able to get out and are on their way to poland but also one of my graphic artists my cover designer um, is from the ukraine and she does excellent work and so far I know that she is safe and she is still doing a cover design for me. Up to last week, she was still working amidst what was happening and I'm grateful. So I wanna ask you to pray that this war will cease. And uh, as I heard Joanna Penn um, state in her episode, you know, when you think of what is happening there and what we're doing in our writing, it can seem, you know, minuscule compared to what is happening there. But I believe, like she said, writing is powerful. It is through the work of creatives that the word is getting out and uh, um, writing changes things. Now let's get to the Q&A session to answer some of the questions that were asked by authors and other creatives during the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit. I just wanna to say to everybody, it's our Q&A time. Ask your copyright questions. This question is from Miss English. As far as Jacqueline Edwards, a Jamaican in Canada is asking, as far as copyright is concerned, can she register her work in Jamaica? as a US resident, sorry, she's in the US. As far as copyright is concerned, can I register my work in Jamaica as a US resident? Yes, certainly, certainly you can. It would be important though to have an agent in Jamaica who would be able to, um, to act on your behalf or to take in documentation, but you could also submit those online. Uh, the only thing is that we don't accept international transfer. So that's why I mentioned the importance of the agent in Jamaica. So yes, you can. Awesome. Miss English, I have a question and it is based on something that one of my authors asked. If somebody takes a picture of me 
I pay them to take that picture, the photographer. Who owns the copyright for that um, image? Okay, so the legislation, so I'm going back to the Copyright Act of Jamaica. So it states that the author of the book, author of the, the photograph is considered to be the first owner unless there is an agreement to the contrary. So if it is that there's an agreement that you are going to retain the IP right, then sure, but the photographer is the one that owns the IP right in the image. Wow. So if the photographer takes a picture of me and I pay them, the photographer has the copyright, meaning that they have to give permission for me to constantly use that image. Is that what it means? Right, because certainly it is their work. So you they commission you commission them to to do take the picture for a certain um, task. So you say that you want to use the work for X, Y, and Z, right? So they own the copyright in the work. So first exa example is also when they do like artistic works or also logo. So for example, moving a little bit away from copyright, but also logo. So you would go to someone to do a logo for you and you think it is yours. They can also, and you pay for it, they can also give someone else. And you see someone else's logo and you're like, this is mine. But at the end of the day, if it is that you don't have an agreement, what is very important is that you have something in writing to say, okay, I'm retaining the intellectual property in this work. So even though you took it, because legislation is clear, the author of the work is considered to be the first owner of the work unless there is an agreement that states otherwise. Okay. And the agreement that says otherwise, um, you can help me out here, is when you, is if it is a work for hire and then you get licensed for commercial use, is that how it works? Because we as authors, we need images, the, the, the cover design, that kind of thing. Are we to ask um, or pay for permission to use it commercially how does it work certainly if it is that you have a license to use the work you're good because you have the license would already have all the details in terms of the agreement what time span what can you use it for so the license would already have the different terms and conditions where you'd have already signed up to to say okay yes i can use it for this um, particular period for this purpose and so forth so that is important but if it is that you are going to a photographer I usually encourage persons to say, okay, go with an agreement. Tell them from before that you want IP rights in this image. So you are aware that the law says they are the owner of it, but you are paying for it and you're also stipulating that all the rights be transferred to you. Okay, awesome. So like when we go on a site like Fiverr, and here's a big tip, guys, if you want to keep your costs down, Fiverr.com is the lifesaver. They have range prices start from $5 up to $800 for different services that you need. And you can, if you're on a budget, like I was having no money when I started, Fiverr is what saved me. So I know some people give it a flap, but I have found excellent services on Fiverr. Um, you can get covers for less than $100. Now, when you go to Fiverr and... Uh, um, they produce the work how does that w work because i sometimes people ask about you pay a little extra for the source file um should should the same apply when you go on this freelancing site to get work done say i'm a children's book illustrator and it's work for hire on one of these sites how do i treat it to ensure that nobody else will 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 use the images and the illustrations you may have said it but bear with us this is copyright for dummies, Oa. So <laughs> help us. When we go to Upwork or Fiverr, even in Bamboo Spark, how are the authors to treat um, the hiring and using these um, entities to get their work done? Okay, that's an excellent question because at the end of the day, you want to be certain that what you, there are no legal suit that will be coming when you are using those images on your, your books. And so again, I think it goes back to the agreement. It goes back to what terms and conditions. Most of these sites have their terms and conditions. And so please, I usually encourage persons to pay attention to what their terms and conditions are. And once it is that you're clear and you have bought the license to use the work, then you're okay to use it. Once you have permission to use the work, then you are fine. And I'll also encourage persons to... Uh, Sign up with Jam Copy for authors in Jamaica. Sign up with Jam Copy. And there are a number of rewards and benefits that you can gain from them as the collective 
licensing organization in Jamaica that deals with illustrators, that deals with authors. So I think that is also a very good place to start and you can also receive royalties and so forth from them. So also visit Jam, Jam, Jam Copy, which is a Jamaican copyright licensing agency. They'll also Thank you. We have another question for you, but with regards to Jam Copy, um, Jamaicans at home or abroad, if you use a publisher in Jamaica, you can register with them. And at the end of the year, they give you a, a, a royalty check, depending on how many persons would have used your book. So check out Jam Copy. Here's a question, Miss English. Um, Audrey Malcolm says, what are the pitfalls of posting some of your work, poetry on Instagram, Facebook, read copyright issues? What are some of the pitfalls of posting your work? Well, the major pitfall is that once it is that you put your work out, you there is a likelihood that there are persons who may copy the work and who may do some other rights that you have as the copyright owner. And so you have to be very careful. What I usually suggest is that you can put watermarks on your work. So when you have the watermark on your work, then persons are less likely to want to use um to copy or use your work because they're gonna feel like, oh, persons are gonna know it's not my work. Uh, so I usually um, encourage individuals to be very cautious with social media because there are persons who have put their work out, out on social media and, you know, unknown to them, there are other persons who are using it and also probably benefiting from it. And so that's something I have to be careful about. And you won't be able to know all the persons who are using your work. And so they can be benefiting and you can be at a disadvantage. So think carefully before you put your work on the internet. But also remember, as a copyright owner, you're also protected to, uh, if it is that your work is on the internet, because one of the, the rights is the right of making available, which is to have your work on demand, which is on the internet. And so you're also protected once your work is on the internet. So if it is that you see someone else using your work, you can always bring a case of infringement against them. And that's the reason why I said that it's very important to have some evidence to support your claim to say, okay, I am the creator of this work. Right? Because it's going to be your word against theirs. And at the end of the day, who has the better evidence is the person who wins the case. Okay, excellent. What about blogs? When I um, write blog posts or I just want to, 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 to get a state. Here's the big thing. And I'm surprised nobody has asked it yet. When I want, we do nonfiction. So many times we need... Um, authority we need to back up what we are saying by quoting from another book how do we treat that because that very concern is what often hinders some especially very those in the education sector that concern often hinders them from writing so if i want to quote from somebody else's book to back up my argument what should i do as an author okay awesome and so with everything in life there are exceptions and so there are exceptions to using copyrighted material, especially for educational purposes. Um, so it falls within the general ambit under a legislation as fair dealing. And so as an educator, you certainly can make reference to individual's work, especially for criticism, for a review. So if it is that you're reviewing something or if it is that you're making comments on a particular work, certainly you can go ahead and use it. And you are also, um, as the law suggests, it's important to attribute so you make recommendation or make reference to the fact that this is the person who created the work according to X, Y, and Z. And then you put your statement, then you give your, your general overview. Because one of the things that we don't want a person to extract a big trunk of an individual work into their book and then call it criticism and comments, because many times we see that happening and that is where persons can bring a case of infringement. And it is for the court to decide if it is the amounts to infringement based on the substantiality, how much of the work is used? What was the purpose of his new work? What are the, the commercial value associated with the use of that work? So it's a big ambit. It's not just, okay, it's a clear answer. It all depends on a case-by-case -case basis. So based on what is used, and then it's, the court will now have to decide whether it falls within the ambit of fair dealing. So hold on, Miss English. I'm almost sure I heard somewhere that even if you attribute, you will not be accused of plagiarism, but you can still be accused of copyright violation if you didn't get permission to use the person's work. And we're Certainly. talking books that we are writing now that we're going to sell. Certainly. So um, do we need permission? 
and when do we not need permission uh, okay. to use the person's work in the books that we're writing to go and sell? Okay, so the first rule of thumb is that you always ask for permission, but depending on whether or not, so you would know, know what you're doing based on if it is that you're writing a research paper or a thesis, right? You are doing it for an educational purpose. And so you know the general purpose. If it is that you're doing it to sell and to make a lot of money, then it's certain that, you know, you would reach out to the author of the work and ask permission to use the work. I know sometimes it's difficult. So sometimes I would say speak to the collective management organization because they manage the rights of the copyright owner as well. So excellent. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah. All right. Um, here's another one. I know you touched it, but this person may have missed it. So how can I make sure ownership of my work? Can you repeat that again, please? Okay, awesome. So as I said, um, copyright protection arises automatically. So once you create your work, you're protected automatically, right? And you're considered to be the owner of the work. And the legislation says that the author of the work is considered to be the first owner of the work, contrary, it's subject to any agreement to the contrary. So if it is that uh, you create a work, but you want to transfer the work to someone, you can do that. But in terms of protecting yourself or safeguarding yourself, you can utilize the poor man's copyright, or you can utilize the voluntary copyright registration service that we offer at JIPO to have evidence that you created the work. All right. So thank you, Ms. Ings. Well, let me say it again, because authors are often asking me, new authors, how do I copyright my work? Let me try to put this in layman's term. Once you write something, you have the copyright. <laughs> it's automatic. Yes. All right? Yes. You yes. own the copyright automatically. I Once you get the idea out your head and put it on paper. on paper. What you need to do now is to go register that copyright to have proof so you own it. So you own it, but you don't necessarily have proof so you own it. So what Jaipo and Jam Copy does is to help you to have proof, say you own it. I know we have international persons here. To have proof that you own it. And uh, we're talking Jamaica here, but the same applies with any intellectual property office in your country. Right. So and each country would have these perhaps in their national library or somewhere. You right. go register the copyright to prove that you are the owner of it and you get a certificate or something. Go ahead, Miss English. Right. And also to add, so for Jamaica, your work is not only protected in Jamaica, but your work is protected in all the parties who are members to the Berne Convention. So your work is protected. Currently, there are 180 countries who are parties to the convention. So once your work is expressed in the tangible format, you receive protection in those 180 countries and there are really no formalities as the Berne Convention states, but the exception of the United States, they require that you must register with their National Library of Congress. So what I want us to remember from this conversation is that it is copyright protection is automatic. As you were saying, Ruth, once you write it down, you receive your protection, but the evidence is important. So even though there are no form, really formalities that we must point out, but it's important that you utilize one of those mechanisms, poor man's copyright or the voluntary copyright registration service. Thank you. Paul, Paul Blake is saying, why giving credit to the author in your work take care of that problem? I'm not sure, but um, you have to explain the question a little bit, but I want to make two distinctions here. Plagiarism is not the same as permission. So once you give credit, you won't be accused of plagiarism as stealing but that does not uh, get rid of that is not saying that you got permission to quote the work so you quoted the work and you said that uh, miss english according to miss english xyz you gave credit so you can't be accused of plagiarism that you stole it but miss english can still sue you for copyright violation because you didn't get permission to use her words her written material in your book. Does that make sense? Am I getting it right, Miss English? Yes, you're getting it right. And one of the things I want to point out too is that a copyright owner has two rights. They have a moral right and an economic right. And they, for the moral right, they have a right of integrity and a right of paternity, which is the right to be recognized as the author and the owner of their work. And so I know we'd all feel 
um, sad if we see someone else take a chunk of our work. So we, that is sometimes important, the attribution. We must be identified and recognized as the creator of our work. And so it is very important. Put yourself in a position, how would you feel if someone take your work, right? That's what I always try to use as an example. Certainly would not feel good if someone uses your work other than whether they receive permission from you. I have another question here, but because I'm a publisher and an author too, like, like you, I have to ask this one. Quoting lyrics and poems, whereas maybe for the other works, there is the fair usage. I, I believe based on some research I've done, it is trickier when it comes to lyrics for poems or songs. What's the rule of thumb there? in terms of this, because it's a smaller body of work. I believe I understood that just a line can get you in big trouble. So can you clarify in terms of using, writing out people's songs in your, in your, in, or quoting a line from a poem or a song? Okay, uh, okay, thanks for asking that question. Uh, for the poems and for the lyrics, it's the same thing because they are considered as literary works under the definition of the act as well. And so they'd receive the same protection. You mentioned the one line that may be the most effective line in the work. And so when you're looking at infringement, you're looking at, as I said before, a case by case basis. If that is the, mo the, the, the line that sells your work and your work is famous for that, if someone uses that, then certainly, you know, and that would have been a breach as well. So once you use the works, the, the rule of thumb, once you use the work without permission, if it doesn't fall within the ambit of fair dealing, then that's an issue. That's awesome. An issue. I think maybe this is the final one on copyright. All right. So Patricia Reedwell says she did a poem for hire. So the guy could have turned it into an illustrated children's book for online library. She's asking, is the copyright hers or the guy's? So she did the book. She's the one that created the work. She The poem, yeah. The guy she, paid her to create the poem. Okay. So she, she is the author of the work. So the author of the work is the creator of the work. So unless she has an agreement with uh, the whomever paid her, then that would be different. So once it is that, so she creates the work, she's considered to be the owner. That is the law. <laughs> Unless there is some agreement that says otherwise, the importance of the agreement. What does the agreement say? Do we have an agreement in place that says, okay, once I con I, con I complete this work, then I transfer all the rights to you and I'm going to be compensated, adequately compensated by receiving X amount of money for what you're doing. Awesome. So here is the thing. Why we have on the copyright pages of books and sometimes at the back, you must still give attribution to the cover designer. That's why you would have edited by, formatted by, and uh, photography by. All of those things must go on your copyright page within the book. So don't, don't think it is optional because even though you paid them, one of the persons I deal with on Fiverr, she, she gives me a, a document that says license for commercial use. And, and, and so these are things to be borne in mind. I trust that you enjoyed that and some of the very questions that you had in mind were answered. Don't forget to share this episode with your family and friends. Let people know about the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast. If you want to learn how to self-publish, how to start your publishing business and the tools and strategies you need to publish and then leverage the book to win beyond book sales, this is the podcast for you. And if you want to hear Caribbean authors share their stories, this is the podcast for you. So thank you for listening. Share, share, share. We are going to be looking at leveraging in the next month. And so we're going to park, as it were, some of that publishing, publishing steps, and now look at how we can leverage books to win beyond book sales, which is what entrepreneurship for me is all about. Remember, take charge of your publishing, go pen it to win it, and dominate entrepreneurship. Ta for now, until next time. I'm Tamara Francis, educator and editor. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share the podcast with your network. If you'd like to increase your impact and income with books, visit authorpreneursecrets.com 
For more resources, including the books Can It to Win It and Authorpreneur Secrets, join the Authorpreneur Secrets Academy membership group for courses, coaching, and community support to write, publish, and win with books. Enrollment is in January and June each year. You may also sign up for one of Ruth's Publishing Made Easy courses or private coaching to write and publish your next book. Until next time, go pen it to win it.